Holy salute, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, just had a thought. Uh, when I was a little boy, I told God, God, I want to be like my daddy. God, I want to be a giant. You see, my daddy was a big man. And uh, he was about 6'3", 6'4", 295, 300 pounds. Big man. And I said, Lord, when I grow up, I want to be just like my daddy. And so when I prayed that prayer, you know, I didn't understand things about, you know, being selfish or asking, you know, to be like somebody else. Or, but I love my daddy, you see. But uh, as my testimony goes, my daddy was taken when I was nine years old, he was taken early from me. I always missed him. But I never grew up to be his stature. You know, I'm only about 5'9", 200 pounds. So I'm nowhere near the size he was. But the Lord just brought to my memory and, and, and remembrance this prayer that I prayed when I was a little boy. And the Bible says, when the Spirit come on you, when the Holy Ghost come on you, you shall receive power. Now, we know Abba Father. The Spirit of God was given to me when I was born again. I am a giant on the inside. I'm 10 times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside because of the power of the Holy Ghost, because of my Father who art in heaven. So my prayer came to pass. I want to be a giant when I grow up. Glory to God. And maybe you want to be a giant too. Maybe you want to increase your ministry. Maybe you want to increase... Uh, uh, your spirit within this is what i want you to do i want you to say i want you to prophesy i am a giant on the inside you, we know what a giant is in the bible now we know you know they were big beings you know uh the sons of god came into the daughters of men and they were nine to twenty foot tall or whatever but that's not the giant i'm talking about the giant i'm talking about is being bold, as bold as a lion, as big as God would have you be, as big as you want to be, as big as you can receive in Jesus' name. Say, I am a giant on the inside. It is true that God is not a respecter of persons, but it's also true that some love God more than others. It's true. Some relationships with God are closer than other relationships are with God. Some don't have a relationship with God at all. And you can see the fruit of this testimony of this relationship that one has with God. They are as bold as lions. They are big on the inside. They can heal, heal people. They can prophesy. You know, they do hear from God. And so if you want this, you have to get close with God. It's a closer walk. If you want to be bold, if you, if you want to be a giant, it's all yours for the taking. All you got to do is pray more. Seek Him more. Seek Him more in prayer. Seek Him more in reading and studying the Bible. Don't just read a scripture. Study it. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman. So work, diligent, seek him. And if you want a gift, ask for the gift. But I also want to tell you to, much, to whom much is given, much is required, that if you receive this gift, it can't lie dormant in you. You have to use it. Also, there, there will be... Uh, a stronger resistance from the devil, the enemy, 
the higher up you are, the more of God you have, the stronger the devil will come against you. It is true, but God will be with you. You are a giant on the inside, praise God, and you will overcome by your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You know, you know, I just I was just riding down the road. I had to pull on the side of the road out here in the middle of a field. I just had to I just had to the the preach this. I just had to make this video. Because Smith Wigglesworth even said that he was bigger on the inside than he was on the outside. I can't remember how many times he said, I think he said a thousand. And, you know, when you can raise the dead in the name to glorify the Lord Jesus, you know, it's pretty substantial. And the same thing God did for him, he could do for us. You know, I believe and receive. I'm not one that limits God. You know, I practice what I preach. I believe in healings. I've seen signs and wonders. I've seen miracles and healings in my, in my ministry. And in my testimony, in my life, it's because I believe I don't limit God. I am a giant. The Bible says when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall receive power. And it's a movement of God. Whenever the Holy Ghost comes or uses you, you speak bold things, things unknown, things that come to pass, things that, uh, that uh, people who may have been in the church for 30, 40, 50 years don't know. It's because of the wisdom of God. There's nobody older or elder or wiser than God. So therefore, there may be a preacher that's been preaching for 50 years. He may be 80 years old. He may have got saved when he was 30 years old. He may have started preaching right away. That man may be up there preaching and, and somebody just gets saved and he's... uh. 41 and he starts speaking things things unknown and and god is using that man and that man said well i've never heard of that you know the preacher uh 70 year old preacher i've never heard of that you know i don't know about all that well you don't have to know of it you just have to let uh let go and let god let god use people other people he told elijah i got seven thousand more elijah said where he said over there you know, we got to see these things. We got to see these things. We got to open our eyes and see that we're not the only one. We got to open our eyes and know that God could use everybody. And, you know, it's a closer walk. You could walk so close that you feel like you're going to walk on water. You could walk so close to be like Enoch and feel like you're going to walk into the sky and just go on to heaven. It is a closer walk. And if you want this closer walk, you must practice what you preach. You must pray all day, every day. Pray without ceasing. The Bible says don't stop praying. It don't say pray one or two or three times a day. It says do not stop. Paul wrote pray without ceasing. How is this possible? I'm about to give you a nugget. I'm about to give you some wisdom. You don't have to stop what you're doing. You could be anywhere doing anything. But you could be talking with somebody and pray for them in your heart. You don't have to, you could pray with, uh, while they're talking to you. You could be praying for them in your heart. You don't have to use your, your mouth. You don't have to use your brain. You could just pray from within your heart. And I tell you that the stronger prayers that you pray come from your heart because that is where God resides. He don't reside in your mind. He don't reside, he don't reside on your flesh. He resides in the heart. And when you pray in your heart, these things come to pass that you pray for, praise God. Now, in the Word of God, it says we got to put on the mind of Christ. Uh, you know, the washing of the water of the Word. Whenever you uh, read the Bible, it, it, it's in there. And, you know, the things that portray your thoughts, it's cleansed out. And the Word is renewed in there. You're replacing the bad with the good. And that's why bad thoughts try to pop in your mind. But you can rebuke them in the name of Jesus and you could counter with scripture just like jesus did when he was tempted by satan but nothing shall ever enter into your heart because that's where god resides 
always. There may be sometimes where a uh, thought pops in your mind and God might not reside in your mind, but God will always reside in your heart. And this is where prayer, the power of prayer, relies on. This is where it comes from. It's the confession with the mouth. Confession with the mouth that comes from the heart. I recently told my wife, she was praying to <clears throat> receive the uh, prayer language. I said, you have to put your tongue out of your mouth and let God have it. And it will come from your heart because that is where God is. And I prayed for her. And I laid hands on her. And I was praising God. I was running around. I said, Lord, I already thank you for it. I know what's going to happen. Well, it came to pass, praise God. And she started speaking in other tongues and praising God and praying to God in other tongues. Because the confessions of the mouth made unto righteousness is what the heart speaks. It comes from the heart. And the tongues and the prayers and the prophecies, it all comes from the Spirit of God. Because the Holy Ghost has came down unto us, into our heart. He said, I will take away the, the black stony heart, and I will put in a, a fresh new red heart. Praise God. So this is where the giant comes from. God is a giant. God is larger than life. God is bigger than this world. God is bigger than anything that will ever come against you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Oh, Lord, help us. Help us in these last days, Father. So I prophesy to you. I impart to you to become a closer walk. A closer walk with thee. I impart a, a bold spirit of a lion from on high. In the name of Jesus, all we do glorify and magnify the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is what the boldness is for. If we raise the dead, we glorify Jesus Christ. If we heal, it's for Jesus Christ. If we prophesy and it comes to pass, it's for Jesus Christ. All that we do as children of our Father who art in heaven is for Him and His glory. So now that we understand why we have to be close with Him, and if we want to work mighty works and do mighty deeds, why it is, but just glorify Him and not self. Uh, sometimes people pray for things and they haven't received it yet. It's because it's not time. Keep praying. Don't give up. Other times it's because God might think that you're going to glorify yourself and not Him. Another thing is if, if you're not close enough to God, if you're not serious enough with God, that's getting in the way. John the Baptist said, I myself must decrease so he may increase. So that could be another thing that's getting in your way. Another thing could be uh, you're leaning on to your own understanding, your own knowledge and your own ways and not on his ways. You're full of yourself. You you have thoughts that, that you are right. And your pride is before the pride of God. And uh, God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. You have to humble yourself inside of God. And he will lift you up. You can't lift yourself up. You can't put yourself into an office. He puts you into the office. You can't give yourself a gift. He gives you the gift. Everything we have comes from him. It comes from above. Every good gift is from God. All the nine gifts. And so if you've got four or five gifts and you want all nine, just keep seeking them. Just keep praying. Trust them. Uh, know that it's already happened. You know, you can jump from evangelist to apostle like that. Actually, Paul the apostle was an evangelist. You know, but I, I believe... And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that uh, all the apostles had all nine gifts. If I, from my understanding, that's what an apostle is. It's an elder that has all gifts. They touch all the gifts. They are the thumb of God. The finger is the prophet. 
The middle finger is the longest. It branches out and evangelizes. The ring finger is married to the pastor. It's the pastor of the church. They're married to the, the to the church. They're the preacher. They're the priest. And the uh, small finger is the teacher. You know, this is the hand of God. All five offices, all five fingers. And so, uh, prophet has most of the gifts. Evangelist has some of the gifts. Pastor can have any gift that uh, the Lord see. And a pastor can be an apostle. A pastor could be a prophet. A pastor can be an evangelist. A pastor could be a priest or a preacher or a teacher. Uh, that's a that's a field that's open vastly. You never know what a pastor is, and not one or the other. That could be all. But uh, back in the days, in Paul's days, a pastor was an apostle, a true apostle. Nowadays, we have stand-in apostles who uh, <clears throat> maybe have some of the gifts, not all, but that's okay. God works it out. He sends others to help make the church to be edified.